So on a previous video, I got a comment by the world-renowned Devon Siplenkov asking, can you grow in hand length? Well, let me stop you there. The answer is basically no. Any structure that is composed of bones is very, very difficult to lengthen along the longer axis. In the same way that you cannot grow significantly taller in adulthood due to bone growth halting and growth plates fusing, which normally happens at the end of puberty, the bones simply stop growing following natural order at least. You can, of course, in the same way that you can increase height, theoretically lengthen any bone by surgically cutting or breaking and gradually pulling the new sections apart so that the bone attempts to fill the gap. This is done over a long period of time with incremental increases in distance to the desired length. Of course, this puts the person out of commission for the time under surgery as well as a period after surgery while they recover. This also means that the newly lengthened section of bone is quite a bit weaker and less established in maturity than the older parts, so would be much more liable to breaking. For leg lengthening to increase height, this weakness is less of an issue, unless a person is hoping to play combat sports or do heavy squats on the new bones. Of course, doing squats would help to strengthen the new bone sections, but they will be weaker than the old, and the old may actually weaken in the time it takes to strengthen the new with a reduced load. So you sort of end up plateauing in overall strength. An important thing to remember with most surgeries or medical operations is that they aim to move the person towards only the level of an average person. People with new arms or legs are not operated on to give them a superhuman strength and abilities, they are operated on to bring them out of a deficiency in comparison to the general population. As it is right now, artificial limbs may have some mechanical strength advantages due to the materials, but they lack the dexterity and fluid interaction that an ideal organic limb would retain. So back to hand lengthening. If you wanted to break and stretch each of the bones or some of the bones in the hands, perhaps the last segment of the fingers would be the least problematic because they only have structures beneath them rather than on both ends. Then you would be looking at invasive surgery during which time you could not train arm wrestling and the recovery period where you could either not train arm wrestling or train it very, very lightly. And then the post recovery period where you would have longer fingers but reduce strength from stretching and reattaching tendons or extending the moment arm above their attachments. And a heightened chance of these bones re breaking, especially on the table where loads are hard to gauge or restrict and control. So, all of this surgery for a reduced ability and a greater risk of damage in the sport you aim to improve by the process seems like a not so beneficial venture. Pretty much as far as length goes, you are fixed after puberty. Now, pre-puberty and unnaturally during adulthood, some possibilities arise. And as you probably know, these are basically all growth hormone related processes. Children who have regular levels of growth hormone secreted during puberty grow to regular levels of height. Of course, this varies from person to person, but it wouldn't look abnormal. So too, is the length of the bones decided. Children with regular ordinary doses of growth hormone experience regular ordinary both lengths in adulthood. Children who are deficient will gain height more slowly and end up shorter by the time their growth plates within the bones fuse. This can be counteracted, although not always, by supplementing them with synthetic growth hormone to make up for the natural deficiency. Conversely then, a child under larger exposure to growth hormone will naturally grow larger by adulthood. There are surgical interventions for this, such as removing tumours which are impacting the pituitary gland which secretes the growth hormone, or medicinal or even radiation therapy to stem the release. Both of these deviations from the norm can create extreme effects, as we see with things like the world's tallest or shortest people. But both of these extremes, while being advantageous in things like basketball or whatever being very short is advantageous for, also brings with them issues such as instability and weakness, since the available real estate is either stretched out or compressed inwards. Now, remember, this is not actually bringing the person to a natural state. For whatever reason, nature has decided that the natural level for that person is less or more than the average person. So this supplementation, although deemed necessary, is still not a natural use of drugs. There is no such thing. But let's get into the part you care about, growth hormone supplementation in adulthood. As we've covered past puberty, the bones have fused and fixed themselves lengthwise. However, if the person post-puberty then supplements with excess levels of growth hormone, or for whatever natural causes is exposed to elevated levels, then the bones will try to grow, but the growth cannot be length-focused. Instead, we end up with the process of acromegaly. 
Now, acromegaly as a term comes from the Greek root words. Akron meaning extremity, which could either be physical, such as fingers, toes, hands and feet, or simply the measurement itself being in the extreme, and megas, meaning large, like mega. Put together, these create, quite aptly, extreme big. So you can just think of acromegaly as extremely big. But this is a type of bigness, not the same as simply enlarging the soft tissue of the body, like muscle or fat. Acromegaly is the process of the structural hard material enlarging, most typically the bones and then the more extreme bones, meaning the ones furthest away from the centre, like the hands and feet, and the head and the jaw. Of course, all bones do grow, but most visibly the ones with no bone set against them to restrict their growth. And as we said before, they do not grow longer since this option has been removed in puberty. Instead, they grow thicker, but and especially in the fingers and toes, specifically the most distal segments, aka the tip toes or fingertips. This thickening can also happen at the ends of the bones, meaning they essentially do grow longer since there is a growth outwards, but on the end. So generally, a person exposed to supra-physiological levels of growth hormone past puberty will experience bone thickening and widening, which you can see in jaw growth and teeth space increase and finger and toe girth increasing and even the most superficial areas of a bony structure increasing in size, such as brow thickening and rib space decreasing, etc. Essentially, the person becomes extremely big but not taller, like a stereotypical Neanderthal. And of course, the degree of acromegaly depends on the dosage and or length of exposure to these superphysiological levels of growth hormone. An issue with this growth is that you may lose some dexterity since your fingers have grown but the joints and available sockets and spaces have not. In fact, they have relatively shrunk compared to the bones, which also increases the risk of bones rubbing against each other and wearing against the synovial joint fluids between probably encouraging inflammation of the joint, so arthritis is a real risk and this tends to reduce mobility across the joints. So for this kind of athlete, hand control might not be an option or an advantage, so they would probably benefit more from straps than just hand sparring. But that's about it for this section. In the next I'll go over possible ways to hypertrophy the hand muscles, which would probably be much less risky than trying to alter the fundamental structures that your body has settled on. So make sure to check out that video when it goes up and absolutely without failure make sure to like this video so that we can all learn how to get nice juicy thick slabs of meat for our hands. Give me some feedback too. Have you seen any hand growth? How big are your hands? If you hit the subscribe button they will probably get bigger unless you have already hit it in which case they'll definitely get smaller if you hit it again. But I appreciate all of you with your girthy grabbers. See you later.